Right, we're just going to do a short section now on ultrasonography of the palmar or plantar pastern. The anatomy uh, between the forelimb and the hind limb at the, at the pastern is, is pretty much similar ultrasonographically. So we'll just concentrate on the forelimb um, and, and the same sort of applies really for, for the hind limb. Um, in much the same way, the pastern is subdivided down into zones. Um, though in the pastern, ten, convention tends to go with zones 1A, B and C and then zone 2, 2A. Um, so what we'll do, we'll start at zone 1A and as before we'll get the image, freeze and then we can discuss the structures. So we're starting just distal to the ergot, about 1 to 3 centimetres distal to the ergot on the midline and we're just going to try to optimise our image. So looking at that image, right up at the top of the skin, the top of the image, sorry, uh, we have the skin. Immediately below that is a very thin um, proximal um, digital annular ligament, often not discernible ultrasonographically. Then we have the superficial digital flexor tendon, which is again quite a uh, thin strap-like structure, slightly crescent shaped. Um, Below that, we may find there's a little bit of fluid, uh, which is in an outpouching of the fetlock joint, a distal outpouching of the fetlock joint. Um, and then we can see the um, slightly ovoid uh, deep digital flexor tendon. Below that, we can sometimes see a little bit of fluid in the um, digital flexor tendon sheath. And then underneath that, we can see the straight sesamoidian ligament. And then much harder to see on the image, um, are the medial and lateral branches or lobes um, of the origin of the oblique sesamoidian ligament. Unfreeze that and move down the leg to zone 1B, uh, Paston 1B. So that's fairly similar, but we can just see now that the uh, oblique sesamoidian ligaments have formed together to, <coughs> excuse me, to uh, be a single unit. Um, and also we can note that the superficial digital flexor tendon is, has become very thin and is actually just almost forming uh, a lobe at the medial and lateral border. Uh, the deep digital flexor tendon is still um, quite ovoid and quite large. And then also we've got the straight sesamoidian ligament as well. Um, it's worth just noting that it's almost impossible to optimise the image for both the superficial digital flexor tendon and the deep digital flexor tendon at the same time. Here the image we've got is optimised for the deep digital flexor tendon, but obviously if you were assessing both structures, you'd need to take two separate images to, to be able to look at both. We're then going to come down to zone 1C. Here we can see that the superficial digital flexor tendon has all but gone, um, and also that the uh, oblique sesamoidian ligament, again, is all but gone. The deep digital flexor tendon at this stage is also starting to, uh, to separate into two separate lobes as well, so it forms a sort of dumbbell or peanut um, shape uh, and will end up splitting into, into two separate branches. Otherwise, uh, the anatomy we're seeing is, is fairly similar to to the more proximal zones. Last but not least, we'll drop down to uh, zone 2A.
So there we are down in zone 2A. You can really see that bilobed appearance of the um, deep digital flexor tendon. Um, and also we have the uh, straight sesamoidian ligaments, um, which will insert on the midline scutum um, just around the proximal border of um, P2. It's worth noting that it's quite easy to create hypoechoic lesions within those uh, lobes of the deep digital flexor tendon. And the angle that you have the probe is, is quite important because you can otherwise create artificial uh, hypoechoic areas that would mimic a, a core lesion within that structure.